Well, hello again. Now, I've been a hip surgeon for quite a long time, as many of you know. One of the most gratifying things is when a patient who's had one hip done comes back to me for the other side. It means that they trust me to look after them and hopefully do just as good a job as I did the first time round. Now, maybe you've had a hip or a knee replaced and you're wondering, will this happen to my other joints too? It's a very good question. Keep watching and I'll tell you all about it. A paper in the Journal of Arthroplasty this month looked at this very topic. The study looked at 280,000 patients in the Dutch Arthroplasty Register over a 10-year period. So the data is pretty robust. We have a national joint register in the UK in which every joint replacement done in every hospital is logged and followed. It's been an incredibly powerful tool in improving the quality of the surgery that we do. Osteoarthritis doesn't usually just limit itself to one joint, so there is a chance that you'll need another joint replacement in your life. Now, many studies have shown that within 10 years after a first hip replacement, about one third of patients go on to need another joint replaced, often the opposite hip or a knee. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone's on a fast track to more surgery, but it's good to know the odds and also what might increase the likelihood of needing more than one joint replacement in your life. So what puts someone at a higher risk? Well, according to the Dutch study, there are three main factors. Being younger at the time of your first surgery, having a higher body mass index, or BMI, and sorry ladies, being female. The first two, age and weight, make sense. Younger people with hip arthritis tend to have anatomical or genetic factors that predispose them to getting hip arthritis sooner in life. Now, if you're on the heavy side, your joints will be overloaded more of the time, causing them to wear out more quickly. Being overweight, of course, is also associated with increased inflammation, and this too can adversely affect your joints. What about women? Well, women's hips are different to men's. They're more likely to have dysplasia or shallow joints, and this predisposes them to having arthritis in middle age or younger. The menopause is also associated with joint problems because of the fall in oestrogen levels at this time of your life. Say you've had one hip replaced. The most common next step, if another joint replacement is needed, is replacing the other side or a knee. Around 83% of second joint replacements happen on the same joint on the other side. But what about the timing? Well, on average, if you need a second joint replacement, it usually happens within two years of the first. That's a bit sooner than most studies have shown before. The third or fourth procedures, if they're needed, tend to follow four or five years after that. But just remember, most people won't need these extra operations. So what does this mean for your recovery? Well, interestingly, the outcome after a second replacement is much the same as after the first. Multiple joint replacements can, of course, be challenging in terms of function and pain in the short term, but with good rehabilitation, the differences tend to be very manageable. In fact, most patients feel very satisfied with their pain relief and better function after each joint replacement. If you're preparing for surgery or you've just had your first joint replacement, you might wonder, can I prevent my other joints from going the same way? But while there's no guarantee, some factors are within your control. Keeping your weight healthy, staying active with low impact exercises like swimming or cycling, and maintaining strong muscles around your joints are some of the things that you can do. A healthy, low carb, high protein diet and taking vitamin D can all help as well. Have a look at some of the videos I've done on these. If you're worried about the possibility of needing another joint replacement, remember, that it's common, manageable, and often leads to very significant improvements in quality of life. It's not just having operation after operation. It's about getting back to doing the things that you love with less pain and more mobility. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below and feel free to get in touch. The details are in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time.